All right, welcome back to part two of the Red Shadow's personal gaming history. And when I left off in that last video, uh, I was wrapping up the Super Nintendo Sega Genesis generation. I should have referred to Wikipedia because I don't remember what gen that is. I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself in these videos. I wanted to research a little more. But anyway, in... I'm going to say 1996, I discovered the PlayStation 1. And I, I just referred to it as the PlayStation 1. I meant to just say PlayStation, but you kind of think of it that way now that we've had the 2, 3, and the 4. But the original PlayStation, it kind of fell into my lap. Um, I mentioned last time about how I used to rent a lot of games. Me and my friends, my cousins, we used to rent tons of video games. And uh, one day we were in the store and we noticed a section for the PlayStation. Now the PlayStation had been out for a little while. I hadn't really taken notice of it. This is way before the internet and all that. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I got all of my information on gaming from the few magazines I would read. But otherwise it was like being in a store and like, oh look, there's a PlayStation section. Oh look, I'm in a video store. There's a section over there for Sega Saturn. That's kind of where I discovered a lot of consoles back then, was just walking into stores and seeing it for the first time. So my friends and I were at a rental store, and there was the PlayStation. And we decided to uh, pool our money together and rent a console and a handful of games to play for a couple days. The games that we rented, uh, I know the first and main one was Twisted Metal, which was an unbelievable game at the time. Blew my mind. We also rented, I believe it was Warhawk, from the same people, I believe. Maybe not. Uh, and then uh, the other one was a... I don't remember. It was some sort of a, a military chopper game. It wasn't all that great. We didn't spend a lot of time with it. We spent... Most of our time with Twisted Metal, and then Warhawk was pretty fun, too. Twisted Metal. What a great first impression that game made on me. That sold me right there on a PlayStation. I wanted one really bad. Twisted Metal was like an open-world game with vehicles. It's vehicular combat. Your vehicles are loaded up with all kinds of crazy weapons and power-ups. And Some are fast, some are big, some are small. It's just... You know, it, if you don't know Twisted Metal and you've been around gaming for a while, you've probably been living under a rock. Twisted Metal series made the PlayStation for me. As I said, I would say within a few weeks I had bought a PlayStation. Well, I put it on layaway with a couple of Triple Play 97. Because I love baseball and I thought the idea of getting to play a baseball game in 3D, 3D polygonal graphics was going to be amazing, which it was. So it took me a little while to pay it off, but I got it out and I started playing it. Played my, my baseball game, rented games left and right, and just started picking up stuff left and right. Most of my favorite games of all time are on the PlayStation 1 and, and or are from that era, uh, like stuff on the N64, which comes a little bit later, but PlayStation was the it thing for me for a few years. Games like Metal Gear Solid, the Tomb Raider series, Siphon Filter, Resident Evil, back when people actually really loved it, despite its slow and clunky control scheme, which I never had a problem with. Um, Final Fantasy VII. What more can I say about that? Uh, it's my favorite video game of all time. Nothing comes above it. A lot of people may look at me and shake their head because they're like, oh, the Final Fantasy games before that were so much better. Well, the Final Fantasy games before that were not available to me because I never bought them, never really played them, and uh, never rented any of them. Final Fantasy III, which was actually Final Fantasy VI, which is a game that I really like now. I didn't get exposed to those until the Final, Fan Final Fantasy Anthology and Chronicles came out. The Final Fantasy VII hooked me. I have a, I have a story to tell about that, but I'm going to save that for a different video. I don't want to spend too much time on that. The Final Fantasy VII, though, that's that's the thing. It's my favorite game of all time. 
so those mid to late 90s were just like video gaming delirium for me. I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe how much good stuff there is. The games that I played, the the number of games that I played and got rid of would stagger most people. My collection could be epic if I hadn't been buying games and then being like, oh, I don't really know, go and get rid of it, trade it to get something else. Video game stores, there was a mall there in Missoula, Montana that had a, a it was a software, etc., it was a sister store to Babbage's and, uh, I guess, in a way, to GameStop. That uh, I hung, hung out at that store so much, you wouldn't believe it. They, they pretty much knew me by name. Uh, but also around that time, I got exposed to two other areas of gaming, or two other platforms for gaming. One's the Nintendo 64 console, which I also love, and to the PC which I started to get into games, point-and-click adventures like Myst and, and that series, and uh, Phantasmagoria and the X-Files game for the PC. Loved that. Um, the N64 brought me The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, one of my favorite games of all time. But I have found out here in more recent years that my love for the N64 is kind of clouded by the love for that one game. I love GoldenEye. Uh, I love the Battle Tanks games. I love, uh, well, a lot of other games. Donkey Kong 64, uh, Perfect Dark. I mean, there were a lot of really good games for it, but that hazy <laughs> memory, you know, the clouds of, of memory, the longer it gets, you know, the further into time you get from a memory that you have, the more that memory kind of gets changed and phased into something else and uh, for a console with just a little under 300 games there was really only a small handful of things about that a handful of games about that for that console that I really really loved and the rest was just kind of whatever sorry to my N64 forever forum friends who might see this but it's just the way that it is the N64 the popularity that it had or not the popularity but the love that I have for it was really centered around Ocarina of Time, and everything after that was whatever. There were so many more PlayStation games that I fell in love with and enjoyed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, the late 90s came along, and the magazines, I was starting to really get into the magazines, and the first inklings of the internet were coming along. And everybody was talking about what's going to be the next console. Uh, what's going to be the next big thing. And the talk about the PlayStation 2 started to arise. Uh, there wasn't much talk from Nintendo, or at least about Nintendo's next effort. There was very little talk about Sega's next effort, because the Saturn had really not done all that well. I owned a Saturn. I should tell this story really briefly. I had a Saturn for a day. I bought it from the Shopco store I was working at. It was clearance. It was like $50. There were two of them on the shelf. One was in a box that was a little dinged up, so I bought the other one. I went to the mall and I bought like two or three games from the uh, Software Etc. store that were used and they were cheap and they looked interesting. And I took it all home and I hooked up the console and there was uh, the menu screen but nothing after. Every time I put a game in there, it wouldn't read it, it wouldn't come off the menu screen, nothing. I was very disappointed, but I thought, well, I'll take the game console back the next day when I go to work, and I'll get the other one. Maybe it'll work. Well, of course, you can probably guess what's going to happen. I get back the next day to return the console in exchange for the other one, it's gone. Somebody had already bought it. That was my entire time with the Saturn. I got rid of the other games soon thereafter, and, uh, and that was it. A little bit of a bitter taste in my mouth, but I, I still was going to want to play the Dreamcast. I didn't get to play the Dreamcast until later, though. Uh, I had my N64 for, I'd say, maybe six months at the max. And then in 1999, I moved from Montana here to Missouri, uh, of which the time I've been here uh, ever since. I sold the N64 and the games that I had for it to have some money for the trip. Which, by the way, the games that I owned, or the, yeah, the, the only games that I owned for it was Ocarina of Time, 
the Castlevania game that was out, Star Wars Rogue Squadron. I forgot to mention those before. I love the, the Rogue Squadron and Battle for Naboo games. And the fourth game was, and I came prepared apparently for this because I cannot remember the fourth game right now off the top of my head. But Ocarina of Time was the game that made it for me. Uh, I'm going to tell another story about that, an interesting story about that in another video. So, hey, ooh, look at all the foreshadowing I'm giving towards other videos. So, I moved with only my PlayStation 1 and a bunch of the games that I had for it. I uh, got rid of every other console that I had. And uh, I got here and played a lot of those games, even bought a few more, because I remember asking my dad since I was in between jobs for a couple of months after I moved I asked him if he would uh, give me money to buy Final Fantasy I believe it was 9 because I had already picked up 8 when I was still in Montana I asked if I could get 9 since it had just come out and he gave me the money for it uh, till I could pay him back but somewhere around early 2002 I was finally tempted to get a, a PlayStation 2. See, I've never gotten a console right at launch. It's always been anywhere from a year to a handful of years before I do. So I didn't get a PlayStation 2 until early 2002. Paid $300 for it. Somewhere around about a month later, it dropped to $200. That kind of ticked me off because that could have been a couple extra games. But I picked up the, two, uh, the PlayStation 2 in 2002, and I do believe... I got rid of my PS1 and all those games that I had right around that time. So stupid. So horribly stupid to get rid of all those I mean, I had Black Label Final Fantasy VII in great condition, Xenogears, the Lunar games, Lunar Silver Star Story Complete and uh, Eternal Blue Complete. Brand new, everything in them, everything in the packaging, all that extra goodies that they did with those. I got rid of all that stuff. There's another major derp in my life and another big gaming regret. Getting rid of all that stuff back when I had, had it in such great condition. Before people were clamoring for it, before eBay and places like that were making it where you could sell to people and drive the prices up. But I had a PlayStation 2. And uh, I really enjoyed it, true. And I've got some favorite games on that system, but I had left behind my golden age of gaming, my personal golden age, which was the mid to late 90s with PlayStation, N64, and even the tail end of the Super Nintendo and Genesis times. Uh, it looks like my time is running out again for this video, but I'm going to be able to come back, I think, and finish off this series with one more video covering PlayStation 2 up until right this very second. So thanks a lot for sticking around and watching this if you did, and I uh, hope to see you in the next one.